This episode brought to you by these awesome patrons and members. How does Blue SCSI stack up to other solutions? Let's find out. Warm up the CRT, it's time for another episode. Welcome back. Since the last video, I've had some comments and questions about Blue SCSI, so let's tackle those first. I made a mistake in calling the blue pill board an Arduino. It's not. It just happens to be programmable using the Arduino IDE program. My apologies for that error. Regarding support for the Mac Plus, there is some good news. Apparently, Blue SCSI designer Eric Helgeson is working on that. His troubles with the Mac Plus were due to a weird combination of issues and a one small change that needs to be made to the adapter board. As long as you use System 7 and you make that little change to the adapter board, support for the Plus is there. He is working actively to solve any remaining issues, so I suspect full support will be around soon. I mentioned during my build of the kit that the diode through holes on the board are a little too close together. Eric mentioned in the comments of the last video that he'll be fixing that on a future revision. Blue SCSI support for other systems is likely to be good if the machine in question uses a first generation SCSI chip. SCSI 2 and newer systems are known not to work. Eric does have some reports about success on PCs. Other than that, there isn't much information available. I don't have non-Mac systems I can test it on, so I really don't have any more information. For more information on the project, you can keep an eye on his development thread over at 68kmla.org. Link in the description. Well, enough yapping. Let's get to the benchmarks. Here's my benchmark setup. I'm using a Performa 410 running System 755. I chose this machine only because it's really easy to get in and out of. The benchmark program is SCSI Director 4 Pro, available on Macintosh Garden. Link in the description. The devices I'm testing are the Blue SCSI, a SCSI 2 SD V6 2020C, purchased only a couple of months ago, a SCSI 2 SD 5.0B from several years ago, and for giggles, an old spinner drive, an IBM DDRS 39130 from 1998. You would not believe the things I had to go through to get that thing hooked up to that old Mac. Since watching benchmarks run is incredibly boring, I'll just give you the results. Quick sidebar. Do you have any idea how difficult it was to get those screenshots off of that Mac? Took me hours to figure out a process. I had to take the screenshot, save them to an external SCSI drive, connect that SCSI drive to a completely different Mac that actually had internet access, and just set that to the side for a minute. Then I had to go to Macintosh Garden and download a copy of Fetch to get onto that Mac with the internet access. Hold on, it gets better. So then I put Fetch on my local web server so that I could get Fetch, to the Mac, because the Mac was too old to actually browse the internet and do anything. I then used Fetch to grab the files off that SCSI disk to FTP them up to my personal web server on the internet, also I can just download them onto my PC to put them into the video. Crazy! Anyway, let's get back to the review. Looking at all the benchmark tests here, let's see if we can find who the winners and losers are. So the overall winner, I think, is actually the IBM drive. Its maximum read and write speeds basically blow everything else out of the water. It does a really good job uh, at max throughput. Of course, it has some seek problems because it is a good old-fashioned hard drive, and it takes forever for it to move the head around. So its average seek time is going to be a lot longer. What that's going to mean is your standard hard drives for most operations are going to seem a lot slower because you're spending a lot of time just waiting for the head uh, to move around on the disk to wait for the data to fly into their head so that it can read it. You're just basically waiting for physical stuff to move around. Um, that, uh, that's borne out in the uh, seek times of both the Blue SCSI and the SCSI 2 SD 5.0. You can see that their seek times on average are way better than the IBM drive. Weird outlier here though is the SCSI 2 SD version 6. It has really long access times for some reason. I don't know if it just doesn't like my my uh, Performer 410 here or something. In addition, as you can see for the right graph there, the test never actually finished. It got to about iteration seven there, stopped and never completed. So I don't know what's going on uh, with that there. I suspect that it is an actual system issue and not the SCSI 2SD itself. 
Comparing the Blue SCSI to the rest of the devices, as you can see through its max read and write, its average access times and all of that compared to the uh, other devices, it's right there in the middle. It's right on par. It does a really good job. It's not quite as fast as the SCSI 2 SD version 6, um, but it's, it's on par with the version 5. So, uh, yeah, I think it does a really good job. And for everyday people, everyday users of your vintage Macs, I don't really think you're going to see much of any sort of performance difference going with the blue SCSI compared to the other devices. What that means for you is that, uh, really you should buy based on features and costs, not necessarily performance. Overall, I find the Blue SCSI performance to be on par with about any other solution I've tried, at least from a subjective point of view. If you want to see some really in-depth and technical benchmark tests, I suggest you hunt down Retro Theory on Twitter or 68kmla.org or take a look at his benchmark video. His research on the subject is outstanding. Apparently he's found that if you use XFAT instead of FAT32 on your SD card, the performance is improved greatly, so you might want to check that out if you end up picking up one of these blue SCSI devices. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Remember to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on my latest adventures. You can also support the museum by snagging some merch on jcm-1.com or by becoming a patron. Links in the description. Well that's all for today's episode. While you're here, check out some of my other videos, and remember, 8 bits are all you need.